Look, I used to sit my ass down for 10-hour coding marathons. Yes, 10 hours. Thinking I was Gordon fucking Ramsay in the kitchen, just cranking out line after line of half-baked shit. What? Volume equals progress, right? Well, that's bullshit. All I was doing was autopiloting through tutorials, copying stack overflow answers, and reinforcing the same goddamn bad habits. And after the realization, I stopped. The shift wasn't practice more. It was practice deliberately. And this is the first thing you have to focus on. Practice deliberately. You pick one gap in your skills, one, and you dissect it alive. <laughs> For me, it was algorithms, graphs specifically. I couldn't traverse my way out of a fucking paper bag. And for two weeks, I lived in the dungeon of graph problems. Dijkstra's BFS topological sorting, I wrote the same goddamn algorithm five different ways. And failed every single time. Yes, I did, but I'd get a solution working for one test, then the next would rip it apart like a hungry raccoon in a trash can. But instead of rage quitting, I documented why each failure happened. And slowly, painfully, something clicked. Not because I coded more, but because I coded smarter. I stopped giving a shit about finishing the problem and obsessed over why the problem existed. So here's what you have to do. Carve out 60 to 90 minutes a day, no distractions, no phone, no scrolling Insta, and attack only that weakness. If it's recursion, you write factorial functions until you dream in stack frames, and if it's database optimization, you torture SQL queries until they scream indexes. Build the scary project. Yes, that's the second thing you were gonna work on. Let's cut the inspirational horseshit. Step outside your comfort zone. Yeah, no shit. But here's the problem. Comfort zones aren't cozy. They're coffins for your career. You're rotting in there. And, well, I was too. Building the same CRUD apps, tweaking CSS, feeling like a coding god, because my to-do list didn't crash for once. So I said, Fuck it and built a distributed chat app. Why? Because I knew jack shit about real-time systems. <laughs> WebSockets? I never touched them. Message queues? Sounded like a Starbucks problem to me. Concurrency? What the hell is even that? Yes, literally that's what I know about it. I went in knowing I'd faceplant. Hard. Version 1 of my app was a digital dumpster fire. Messages arrived in the wrong fucking order. Users got each other's DMS, and one night, the entire thing imploded because I treated WebSockets like HTTP. Really, nigga? Like a goddamn caveman. I'm a caveman! Yep, that's me. I spent 48 hours debugging race conditions, chain smoking, and questioning my life choices. Uh, but crawling through that hell taught me more about networks, state, and distributed systems than any Udemy course ever could. Failure wasn't an obstacle. It was the curriculum. Every crash log was a lesson written in blood and caffeine. Every how the fuck do I scale this moment forced me to learn shit I didn't know existed. So here's what I want you to do for your next project. First, pick something that uses 40% tech you've never fucking heard of. Second, choose the project that solves a real problem you'd pay for, not another portfolio padding clone. Like automate your god-awful expense reports, track your crippling caffeine addiction, and build a bot that texts your mom so she stops asking if you're still doing computers. Coming to the third part I want you to focus on, Revisit fundamentals relentlessly. Here's a confession. How are you? I am under the water. I used to treat fundamentals like a fucking Tinder swipe left. Variables? I got this. Memory allocation? That is C shit. I am a Python cowboy. I'd smugly skip chapters in books, fast forward tutorials, and dive straight into advanced topics like a cocky little shit. Then this happened. I built a scalable data pipeline that ran like a three-legged dog in quicksand. The memory leaks, the crashes, the humiliation. Why? Because gaps in fundamentals compound like interest in a loan shark's basement. That basic shit you ignore today, it'll knife you in the kidneys tomorrow when you're trying to debug distributed systems. I revisited pointers in C after my Python disaster. Suddenly, my high-level code's memory hogs made sense. I'd been creating objects like a drunk millionaire at a strip club, throwing cash everywhere without caring where it landed. That ancient C knowledge? Well, it turned my bloated Python scripts into skinny fucking legends. I sliced memory usage by 60% because I finally understood what happened under the hood. Now, here's some homework for you. Every six months, Pick one boring fundamental. It can be memory allocation, TCP handshakes, or how your language's garbage collector actually works. And relearn it like you're explaining it to a pissed off bouncer who failed his CS degree. God, please, no! No! Red code like literature? Yep. 
That's the fourth part. I'll be brutally honest, for years I treated reading code like a tax audit. Why waste time reading when I could be building? That's what I'd tell myself, pumping out complex systems that collapsed under their own weight. Then I hit a wall. My elegant API kept leaking memory like a sieve, and I had no fucking clue why. Turns out writing code without studying great code is reinventing the wheel with square tires. You grind, you sweat, but you never move forward. When I finally opened Flask's source, it wasn't a quick skim. I spent nights tracing how they manage state with context locals, a pattern so simple it pissed me off I hadn't seen it earlier. Their error handling wasn't clever. Uh, it was ruthlessly practical. There was no magic, no ego, just solutions forged in production fires. I didn't copy a single line, but my next project? State management clicked. Errors were contained because I'd seen how the masters think, not just what they build. Now, promise me one thing every week. You have to pick 200 lines from a battle-tested code base. It can be Django, Linux, Redis, or whatever, and study them like an apprentice reverse engineering a master tools. Ask yourself, 1. Why did they architect this module exactly this way? 2. How did they make error handling this resilient? 3. What trade-offs did they accept to make this fast? Coming to fifth part, fall in love with the craft, not the tools. Let's cut through the noise. I used to be a framework junkie. Every goddamn week, some new shiny tool would drop. React, Vue, Svelte, whatever the fuck dot JS and I dive in no matter what. This one will save me. That's what I tell myself, rewriting my entire project for the third time that month. Want to know what I got? Burnout. Confusion. A resume that looked like a tech hype graveyard. What? I finally saw what React abstracted away. The virtual DOM wasn't magic. It was a fucking band-aid for expensive reflows. State management libraries? Just glorified pub systems. And somehow I wasn't afraid of frameworks. I understood them. Are you serious right now, bro? Now I choose tools like a surgeon picks a scalpel deliberately for specific problems. Now, remember this one thing. Tools serve the work. They are not the work. Mastery isn't memorizing Next.js docs. It's knowing why the fuck it exists. When you see through the abstraction, you stop chasing hype and start building substances. Let get to sixth part. Embrace the wall of fucking awful. Let's not sugarcoat this. Every meaningful project has that moment. 2 a.m. screen glow burning your retinas. Code that ran fine yesterday now shits itself with silent errors. Your chest tightens. You feel stupid. Genuinely, deeply fucking stupid. You want to slam the laptop shut and never touch a keyboard again. <laughs> I call this the wall of awful, and it's not your enemy. It's the goddamn gatekeeper of growth. So when the wall hits, do this. First, write the problem in one brutal sentence. Like, why does the payment API return 409 conflict when two users book the same slot? Second, break it into micro tasks so small they feel insulting. Third, execute one and ignore the rest. Your only goal is to make the problem different, not solved. Teach to cement understanding, well that's the seventh part. Here's a hard truth nobody admits. Teaching isn't fucking charity. It's selfish as hell. Early on, I'd learn something, let's say, React hooks, and smugly check it off my list. Yeah, I got this. Then a junior dev asked me to explain, use effect dependencies, and I fucking froze, mouth dry, brain looping. Then I volunteered to run a 10-minute workshop on React hooks for my team. Preparing it gutted me. I'd used use reducer for months, but when I tried to sketch its state flow, my diagrams looked like a toddler's ransom note. I couldn't explain why you'd choose it over use state without sounding like a documentation parrot. <laughs> So I dug deeper, way deeper, until I found the fracture in my mental model that I understood how it worked, not when it mattered. That pressure to articulate it clearly, it welded the concept into my brain. Now when I use hooks, I feel the fucking state machine clicking. Learn from my mistakes. The next concept you learn, whether it's GraphQL resolvers or pointer arithmetic, force yourself to teach it within 24 hours, not to a crowd, to a rubber duck, or maybe to a cat. Now you have two options. Keep watching cats falling off tables. Or just... Whatever.